it's James and welcome to our 7th Risk OS programming tutorial in C. Last lesson we made this, which was an empty resizable window that we can move around the screen. Um, and today we're going to put some text in it, we're going to make another Hello World application basically. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back into our tutorial, our last tutorial folder, and we're going to open utils, and we're going to change this first function up here. Um, do you remember last time here we we said we're going to sign it. We have no icons, so we didn't um, we didn't allocate any memory to the window that would fit any icons in. Well, this time we're going to change that, and we're going to change uh, we're going to actually change our function. We're going to pass in the number of icons. So, in number of icons. Oop. So we're going to pass in an integer, which is going to tell us how many icons, and then we're going to malloc that many number. Icons like that, um, and then what we'll do is we'll go down here, and you see where it says icon count. We're going to change that to two number of icons. Lovely. So um, now we've changed that, we're going to have to change our header file too. So I'm just going to delete this line um, completely and copy this line. So Control Shift C is uh, copy. Control Shift V is paste, and don't forget that semicolon. Brilliant. So now that we've changed these two files, um, we're going to use that change in our tot6 file. So here is our build window function, and we're going to add one icon. Um, now we have to start filling that icon. Um, we have to start giving it data for that icon. So if we go into types um, and we go down to wimp w, um, oh, wrong thing, wrong thing. <laughs> if we go into types and we go into wimp window, um, which is the, the window that this function is just built, um, you'll see down here we have uh, WIMP icon icons, and it's an array of icons. Um, so that's where we're going to store our icons. So um, window icons, and zero is going to be the first icon. So let's have a look and see what our options are for WIMP icon. So we have extent, flags, and data. So first of all, extent. That is just some OS coordinates, so let's start adding them x naught. we'll set that equal to 100 window icons 0.extent.y0, dot dot we'll set that one equal to um, minus 150. These numbers are slightly improvised. Um, <laughs> window.icons 0.extent. <laughs> dot x1 we'll set that equal to 150 and then window icons x0 dot extent dot y1 equals minus 60. These numbers we'll use for our extent. I don't know how big that's going to be. Um, I guess that's exciting. <laughs> so the next thing we need to do is we need to add window flags. So window icons zero dot flags. Let's look at our options. It's just the icon ones, just like when we made the window. Um, we had icon flags for our title bar and icon flags for our work area. So um, it's just these again. So we're going to want text. Um, so wimp icon underscore text. We're also going to want um let's have a look. We want a border for this one. So window uh oh no wimp underscore icon underscore um border. I think we are going to want we're gonna want it H centered. icon underscore h centered and we're going to want it v centered uh, 
and it's going to be centered. We're going to want it filled. Icon underscore filled. Uh, what else we want? Um, what we're going to want is we're going to want to change the foreground color. And you do that in a quite a strange way with uh, buttons. I'll show you. Uh, first of all, we you see where it says Wimp icon foreground color. Um, oh, it doesn't give us the color options. We want to change the foreground color to black. So we're going to go Wimp underscore color underscore black. Then we're going to shift it by Wimp underscore icon underscore FG underscore color. And uh, that will set the color by shifting the color black into the four bits that define the color of this icon. Brilliant. So I think that's all we're going to want there. Next thing we want to do is we want to change the text. So let's look in data. Um, let's also get to data. So window, icons, first icon, dot data, dot, let's have a look. So here, text. I'll go into indirected um, later, but we're just going to do the normal text. And the issue with the normal text is we have a limit of 12 characters. Indirected text, the sky is your limit, I guess. <laughs> um, text. So this area here, this is where we uh, put 12 characters, which is the text. So we're going to use this uh, string copy function. Um, I'm going to stick there, hello world. Ooh world like that then we're going to put the limit as 12 to make sure we don't break anything brilliant so that's all the data let's um let's compile this and see um see if i've made any mistakes right so we'll set the directory we'll open our terminal and we hit make don't need to change our make file from last lesson uh, tutorial if you want to call it oh dear oh no that doesn't matter. You might get that. Um, I don't think that error makes any difference. Um, let's have a look. Have a look. Oh, so here we have it. Um, yeah, there isn't any text at the moment. I've managed to mess up the coordinates. And I've made it far too thin. Um, let's have a look. What have I done? Yeah, of course. I'll change that to 400. That might be really long. I don't know. Let's try again. Um, close that. Make. You see, next tutorial we're going to go over templates, which means uh, you can graphically um, edit your uh, application. You don't need to do all this number work, coordinate work. It's really nice, actually. Um, right, should we try again? You still don't have any text in there. Right. I wonder why that is. I'm going to stop the video and have a little think about that. Um, back in a sec. Welcome back. I've, I think I found the source of the colour. You know I shifted Wimp colour black by Wimp icon FG colour. Turns out I wasn't meant to do that. If I actually click on Wimp icon FG colour, it says shift FG colors bits by Wimp icon FG color shift. I forgot this about OSLib. If you're doing a shift, you need to write shift after each of them. Um, so, um, yeah, I find uh, OSLib still quite confusing. So if we, um, if we make that, if all goes to plan, hopefully, um, hopefully it'll work. I haven't tested it yet. I might be making a fool of myself. Uh, come on, come on, oh, there we go, let's look, perfect, look at that, hello world, that's our icon, um, and if you have a look at, um, if you have a look at, um, have a look at these flags, you'll see there are button flags, so you can set a, a flag to make wimp button click, and then it can receive clicks, we can make a, we can make our button writable, um, we can do all of this with the flags, but we're not going to do this yet. Um, next tutorial, we're going to be looking at templates, um, which will allow us to make more 3D buttons a lot easier as well. And that's when we're going to look into these flags, and we're going to look into clicking and mouse um, events and so on.
but just before you go, um, there's one more thing I want to show you, um, which is at the beginning I told you to get OS uh, Unix lib to make these ELF files. Um, you can see it says ELF, and that's executable loading file or something. I don't know. It's it's a Unix thing, and um, it's not very risk OS. And how it works is when you open this ELF file, it gets loaded into memory by something called the ELF loader, and then risk OS can run it. Um, but I've I had an issue with it when trying to make uh, the pointers tutorial, the second one, I forgot to malloc my uh, struct and it crashed the ELF loader and all of the things I made didn't work. None of them worked. I had to reboot my RISC-OS machine. Um, it was a really weird problem. It took me a long time to work out it was the ELF loader. Um, and also another issue with it is not only could someone crash the ELF loader and then you can't run any of your applications, but if you go into, if you look at the file type, if I go into info, right, 16,000-ish, remember that number, because I'm going to show you something else. Um, there's something called shared C library. Um, and if we shift double click and after dash C, we're going to put M, that's right, dash M lib SCL. So shared C library. And we're going to do that to both these lines ML, sorry, MLib shared C library. And we're also going to do it before the dash O here. So ML. IB shared C library. Lovely. I'm going to hit save here. And what this does is this doesn't use Unix libs, it uses the risk of a shared C library and it creates a more native executable. Um, but if I run this, we're going to get an error. I'll show you. If I if I if I saved it, I've saved it. If I type make, you'll see it'll start to work, but uh, you'll see quite soon I'm going to get a big, big error. Uh, any time now. There we go. Now all of this is because. Do you remember when we? Um, do you remember when we made that run launch? That's designed for Unix lib. This one over here is designed for shared C library. So if you double click on that, it'll overwrite the variables that have been set by that obey file and it'll load in the ones for shared C library. And now if we type make again, it'll fix that problem. So let's have a look. And I think it should compile quicker. Um, but I don't know how much quicker. I don't really know if there's much of a difference. That's less That's less of the reason why we're doing this. We're doing this to, um, to make our application more risk -wise. So Can you see it doesn't say ELF in the corner anymore? It's got a cob. And if we run it, it works just the same. But most importantly, if I middle click and I go into this file and I look at the info, look how much smaller that is. The other one is 16,000 something. This is almost four times smaller. So um, yeah, brilliant. That's why we're going to use the shared C library. Um, so if you, if you want to use the shared C library, which involves always putting this everywhere, what you will want to do is you will want to do what I've already done go into your boot and oh, change what runs on startup to the um, oh, you will want to remove the uh, OS lib thing we did before and you will want to drag in this one set vars ELF shared C library mod that's what you're going to want to do hit set hit set but now you always have to use that um, when you're compiling um, brilliant. I hope that made some sense. Um, see you next tutorial. Next tutorial, I'll show you what we're going to do next tutorial. Next tutorial, we're going to be um, we're going to be using a template editor. Um, very exciting. Just doesn't really matter. To make windows by dragging buttons on, um, just like that. So um, I look forward to seeing you then. Uh, brilliant. Bye.